What's up, YouTube? It's your boy MJ, and I'm back at it again with another video. I usually don't post videos, but I kind of want to get into the reaction, reaction, doing reaction videos. Y'all let me know what y'all want me to react to, but today we're going to be reacting to the Phoenix versus Raven, Marvel versus DC. I don't have no clue who Phoenix is, so this will be unbiased. I know a little bit about Raven, but not a lot. I just know that she's from Teen Titans. I don't know any background information about Raven. So, this might be a good fight, or it might be a wop side fight. Who knows? But let's see. This is Death Battles. Please, Death Battle, don't flag me. Don't copyright. But I be seeing a lot of people do reaction videos to Death Battles. For some reason, mines always get copyright strike and taken down. So... This is just for fair use. I'm just reacting. I don't know any about anything about these two characters. It's just Raven versus, versus Phoenix. So let's get into it. Sponsored by BetterHelp. I am going to work. That's so why y'all see me on my little, my little Walmart. Oh wait, my little Walmart. <laughs> A little wall work at Walmart, stocking the shelves, unloading the truck. That's all y'all gotta know. Jean Grey, the marvelous Phoenix of the X Men. Raven, the Azeranthian demon okay. witch of the Teen Titans. Phoenix if for X is from X Men. Absolutely, hey, bet. in our quest to contain the beast within, we may well be consumed by. One last thing: Did anybody ever thought that Wolverine name was X Men? Growing up, I swear up and down, Wolverine name was X Men. Every time I thought about X Men, I thought about Wolverine. I didn't know Wolverine was just Wolverine and X Men is like a, isn't it like a whole group of people? But yeah. It's Third battle time for Kong. He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In Greek mythology, the majestic phoenix bursts into flames upon its death, then rises from its own ashes. It's a symbol of nature, rebirth, the dawning and setting of the sun, the beginning and end of life. A cycle poor Jean Grey was thrown into way too young when her best friend was struck by a car right in front of her. Just like a phoenix, the trauma of Annie's death was the start of something new her mutant power of telepathy. In Annie's fleeting moments, Jean bonded with her mind, and they experienced her death together. By the way, Jean was 10. Enter Professor Charles Xavier, who hoped to help Jean through her trauma. And was also a telepath. He taught Jean how to control her ex-Jean, and she used her powers to find other troubled mutant kids around the country. Thus, the first iteration of these marvelous mutant superheroes was born. The X-Men. Cyclops, Iceman, the, uh, Beast, Angel, X -Men and of group. course, Marvel Girl. We can, we can work Marvel that Girl. Name. Jean's potential as a telepath was incredible. So far beyond Xavier's, in fact, that he installed psionic blocks in her mind to limit her full power. At least until she was mature enough to wield it safely. She can read and control thoughts, communicate telepathically, rewrite and erase memories, manipulate each one of your senses, and project her mind into the astral plane. Jean is also an expert telekinetic, capable of forming energy barriers, deconstructing giant machines, and even halting the blood flow to your brain. Starting to feel like the guy with big hands who can climb good is a little out of place, but Jean's life would change forever. Not gonna lie, she sound OP already. Mission. Trapped piloting a ship for a hell? solar storm, the Marvel Girl came into contact with an incredible energy. It merged with her, greatly enhancing her power. But there was a catch. This thing wasn't just a power boost. It was a giant space bird! More like a cosmic being, which is the embodiment of the Big Bang, destined to consume all of existence at the end of time. This is the Phoenix Force. Well, merging with the fire chicken didn't turn out so great, because all it wanted to do was blow shit up. Hey, why don't I get a Phoenix Force? That sounds awesome. The Phoenix Force desires destruction. Its fire will one day consume all of existence. That's its purpose. Bro, she sounds broken, this bro. This need for annihilation would prove too much for Jean, manipulating and corrupting her until oh, so she turned evil, where she obliterated an entire civilized planet, billions of lives simply erased. This was the dawn 
of the Dark Phoenix. Yeah, when Jean figured out what happened, she was not okay. No matter how hard she tried to kill the Phoenix's influence, it would always rise back up. Good, because it's a Phoenix. And so, rather than allow this absolute power to consume her, Jean heroically sacrificed herself, ending the threat. Yeah, what a beautifully tragic story about the corrupting influence of power yeah, on the human the spirit. Uh, not really. Turns out that wasn't actually Jean. The Phoenix was just kind of pretending to be her. She came back later. Oh, and she merged with the Phoenix again. Well, that's stupid. But hey, absolute power may corrupt absolutely, but it also absolutely owns. As the Phoenix, Jean can channel vast amounts of cosmic energy, absorb power from others, manipulate matter down to the subatomic level, and even scorch your soul with psionic flames. Flames that take the shape of the Phoenix itself, grow to the size of a universe, and burn Damn. higher than a supernova. The Phoenix can basically do anything. Stop time, open portals, see the future, raise the dead, and create pocket realities just for fun. She can fly at massively faster than light speeds and wage mental battles across infinite distances in seconds. So Poyo Loco even boosted Jean's natural mutant abilities to the max. She's physically strong enough to fight the thing. And she's a stronger telepath than Moondragon was with the Mind Gem. You know, the Infinity Gauntlet bling that controls all minds in the universe? And should Jean fall, the Phoenix can always resurrect her. So long as her soul remains intact, it will reform her body no matter how many times it's destroyed. Which is good, since she's died literally 15 times. As of this recording, at least. She probably died again in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, what the heck? She immortal. But hey, when I don't see Raven around, winning this Phoenix one. Phoenix has jumped into other people. Rachel Gray, Hope Summers, Firehair. It's got a thing for redheads. Oh, do you think it was a bad idea to have Jocelyn study it? I demand a raid. Nah, she's fine. Well, even with plenty of hosts to choose from, the Phoenix would often end up back with Jean. Like a clingy, codependent ex. While Jean might be stuck in a kind of love Ouroboros with Scott, Logan, Emma, basically everyone, her true bestie is the Phoenix. Because according to the Phoenix Force, she is its perfect vessel. The Phoenix <laughs> is powerful enough to stalemate Galactus Phoenix, like, you're and not defeat going the nowhere. Necrom who was going to collapse the multiverse into a singularity. With Old Man Logan as its host, the Phoenix saved the entire Omniverse from destruction. Yeah, basically the embodiment of the previous multiverse got mad and tried to flood reality with his evil juices. So Old Man Phoenix held back a tsunami that would have erased all of Marvel Comics. Let's move on. Even after multiple possessions, Jean was never quite free from the influence of the Dark Phoenix and the threat of its ultimate destruction. But Jean's like the nicest and most patient person ever, so she eventually sort of got through to the Phoenix Force. And with their combined power emotionally stabilized, Jean reached her ultimate state of being. The White Phoenix of the Crown. Sounds like a Dark Souls boss and just as bullshit. White Phoenix is a perfect merging of Jean and the Phoenix Force, allowing her bro, to she has another and space and hold free transformation, bro. That shit going on for like six minutes straight. Room, the highest plane of existence and the center of the Phoenix's power. Beyond the far shore of reality, it is a dimension the Phoenix has complete control over and even gets stronger while in it. But Phoenix could never get out of that let's kill everyone mindset. So Jean finally confronted it and dumped his ass. Yeah, she dumped a cosmic god of destruction. You go girl, time to take back the good old days of Wait, they're calling her Marvel Girl again? Roll it back. But like a phoenix, the two will inevitably rise again and reunite, refreshed and renewed, with a passion that can melt stars and set our souls aflame. All right, Raven This episode turn. is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to spend all your time I, on your work. I, your I, this video is sponsored by no one because I'm not sponsored. to escape his extra-dimensional prison. By manipulating a poor young Gothamite named Angela Rock, he would spawn a half-demon child that would summon him to Earth. See, this is one of the many reasons you don't live in Gotham. Thankfully, Angela was rescued and taken to a dimension called Azareth, filled with a bunch of smelly space hippies. And there, she would have her doomed daughter, Raven. The Azarathians were terrified of Raven. If she ever lost control of herself, even for a moment, she could release Trigon into the world and kickstart the apocalypse. So they trained her to control her mind, forbidding her from feeling any emotions whatsoever. 
and thus suppress Trigon's influence. Which is smart, since even without Trigon, she's strong enough to accidentally destroy the universe. I don't know, Wiz. Being told that if I get too mad or too happy, I'd let loose the actual devil might just make me a tad bit stressed out of my goddamn mind. I call it the prequel trilogy school of psychotherapy. And much like a Jedi, well, so she can't have no emotions. Powers. Raven is an empath and can sense the emotions of others even from across the universe. She can shape those emotions so precisely it acts as a form of mind control. She can sense your presence, absorb and redirect your pain, steal your energy for herself, communicate telepathically, erase memories, or just turn your brain off and put you to sleep. Her telepathy is so strong she could resist a mental attack from the Hive Queen whose psionic abilities could overpower even Superman's mental defenses. God, I could use that some nights. And he can resist mind control from dudes who can destroy the multiverse. What? Seems like Superman's she's kind of broken. She down. can mind control Superman. Very soul. She might got a While chance. Her body is ostensibly human. Her soul is the locus for Trigon's corruption. And she can separate it from her own body in the form of her silhouette. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, that's just a bird this soul self is non-corporeal and can be controlled from an interstellar distance away she can use it to fly teleport across dimensions possess people smash ponies like a battering ram and even absorb things into a pocket dimension of infinite darkness or the nightmares it can also regenerate from complete disintegration sort of like a soul healing factor you know they probably should have thought twice about making the person who could accidentally end the world such a badass given raven's fear of her dreaded destiny it's fitting that her soul soul self should take the form of her namesake, a raven. Across multiple mythologies and cultures, the raven symbolizes prophecy, death, and ill omen. Hey, if uh, ravens mean bad news, what about gooses? Yeah, what about gooses? I'll nibble you. Hey, well, he's I'll nibble your eyes out. Don't nibble you. See ya, suckers. Okay, bye. Oh, right. They symbolize assholes. Upon turning 18, Raven feared Trigon's growing presence and went to Earth to form a super team capable of combating him. Screw you, Satan! It's the Teen Titans! These kids mm, may Teen seem Titans. like the Justice League Junior Edition, but with Raven as their white and black mage combo, they yeah, were Justice League Junior. <laughs> the world. You can add Warrior, too. On Bro, one of Justice their adventures, League Raven's physical body was enhanced to match Donna Troy. An Amazonian strong enough to withstand a blast from the universe buster, Monarch. Well, that's just bad game design. Raven's vast arsenal of magic includes lightning, force fields, illusions, telekinesis, shape-shifting, matter manipulation, stopping and traveling through time, and most dangerously, her control over souls. She can rip your soul out of your body and absorb it. So far, who do y'all got? Drop a comment down below. So far, I think Phoenix got this. Not sure to get stronger even controlling a universe full of souls all at once is no big deal and should someone attempt to possess her she can tether their soul to hers absorbing them like in a possible future timeline where she did just that to the four horsemen of the apocalypse she got strong enough to destroy all of creation she was called the unkindness which is actually the term for a group of ravens Neat. All of these powers made her an incredible asset for the Titans. No longer alone in Azeroth, awaiting inevitable doom, Raven found a new home with new friends. And a potential green-skinned love interest that DC is too cowardly to commit to. Come on, guys. We all ship it. Alongside Raven, the Titans have defeated the Church of Blood, the alien conqueror Mongol, and the Brotherhood of Evil. However, the more Raven used her powers, the more Trigon's influence grew, unleashing a frightening transformation. Dark Raven. Yeah, you can throw empathy Dark out Raven? the window. As Dark Raven, she's a force of pure destruction, a perfect vanguard for her pop's hellish army. Like in the New 52 era, where she led Trigon's forces, conquering worlds for, quote, an eternity. Even destroying her body won't do much. She'll just keep fighting as a messed up demon ghost. But the Titans were not fair-weather friends. With their love and support, Raven overcame her dark side and purified her soul to battle her all-powerful father. We've been talking around him for a while, but Trigon is one of the biggest, baddest mother effers in DC Comics. Literally evil personified. He's wiped out the Justice League with no effort, including our old pal, pre-crisis Superman. The nah. same Superman who flew so fast he broke the bonds of infinity. Trigon, Trigon is stronger than the entire universe, Superman? The fifth dimensional imp, Mr. Mixie Spitlick, and even killed Dr. Fate in an alternate dimension. The same Dr. Fate who flew across reality at the velocity of God. 
Yeah, he's pretty strong, but so is Raven. You see, Raven was raised as a pacifist, afraid that if she let loose, her father's powers would kill everyone she loved. But in truth, Raven's power never belonged to her father in the first place. It was hers, and Trigon had no idea how strong his daughter really was. With the rings of Azar, Raven bonded with Azerath to overpower Trigon and destroy his soul. Even though her body got nuked in the process, she just kept superheroing without it. That's right, as a ghost! But even without her father's direct influence, Raven's incredible power continued to prove impressive. Like the time she fought the Spectre, an unbound angel of wrath whose conflicts often threaten all of reality. Long have the legends of old proclaimed the awesome might of the Goth GF, but I never knew they were true until this day, wizard. Okay. Portents of Doom are nothing new for this shadow-clad sorceress. With her teammates at her side, there's no future this Titan can't overcome. Here's Which Robin is that? Oh my, not a Marshall. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a bird battle! Ka -ka! Oh, I get it. When I think of Phoenix, I think of fire, though. Phoenix, bird, raven, the bird. I'm slight slow. Come to burn my home to ashes. The demon inside you is too strong to be left alive. I'm sorry. This is for the good of the universe. <laughs> Azerath Metrion Zenko! They don't explain. Does she have to say that? Darkness, take you. <sighs> What's the matter? Afraid of the dark. You don't control my mind. I don't know. I still got Phoenix winning this. So far in this video, it's too late for you now. No, one bird looked kind of bigger than the other bird. You're trying to tell us something. How are you gonna kill somebody that two people can't die? I don't get it. Scott, Charles, everyone, give me strength. I am not the daughter of a demon. I am a daughter of Azeroth. Azeroth Metrion Zenko! She's literally fighting with ghosts. How you kill a ghost? Raven Chico. I'm home. Are you? Damn, KO! Raven won. I was wrong. This, one out. this was a nail biter, and perhaps that's surprising since Raven's reputation hardly matches that of the Almighty Phoenix. Probably because Raven's always holding back. 
When she does it, you don't have to dig too deep to see that these two are evenly matched in power. The Phoenix Force was strong enough to hold back the destruction of all creation. But Raven had multiple showings of battling similarly powerful characters like Trigon and the Spectre. And both could compete with speeds exceeding infinity. Sure, Jean got a power boost in the White Hot Room, but that didn't make her invincible. The Phoenix has been overpowered there before, like by this big green cat. So throw stats out the window, this fight came down to their abilities. Both were immeasurably powerful telepaths. Both could control matter and time, and both could absorb each other's energy. However, Raven's ability to survive and fight as just her soul meant that most See, of Jean's look, offensive arsenal hell? could not end the fight. The Phoenix Force could have attempted to possess Raven's soul, but Raven has tethered her essence to other similarly powerful beings and absorbed them in the past. And while the Phoenix's fire has shown to burn souls, Raven's has regenerated from complete disintegration. On the flip side, Jean actually had very little defense against Raven's soul manipulation. The Phoenix could regenerate Jean's body, but not her spirit. When Rachel Gray's soul was shattered, the Phoenix was actually incapable of healing it on its own. And while the Phoenix Force itself will be reborn in the White Hot Room, this can take months, years, even centuries. So it could oh, be damn. one hell of a war of attrition, but ultimately only Raven had the ability to finish this battle. Jean Grey was one of the strongest beings we've ever seen. But Raven's own awesome might, brilliant magic, and unique soul-destroying powers snuffed out her fire for good. Will the Phoenix rise again, returning from that far, far shore? Quote the Raven! Nevermore. The winner is Raven. Oh, I thought Raven was gonna lose, bro. I, I kid you not. I thought Raven was gonna lose. Then this came out a month ago. Shout out to Death Battles for doing these videos. Only one I was really disappointed with was when they did the Vegeta versus um Thor. They kind of rushed that. They ain't, that transformation wasn't even like all that new. Like when they try, they say his god destruction form, yada yada. Like that form was still new. They should have gave it some time. Yeah, Vegeta vs. Thor. That shit came out a year ago. Damn, I still remember that shit to this day. But all right, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'm do be doing more reaction videos. So y'all stay tuned. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe for more. I'm trying to get these watch hours up. And that's it. That's it for today's video. Be posting another one. I'm going to try on Friday since I'm off from work on Friday. I'm going to try to do like a lot of reaction videos. So stay tuned to then. Appreciate y'all.